Okay, in this video, we are doing problem set 83 from Calc A B. Uh, the problems and a playlist are in the description below, and let's see what we can do. Number one, evaluate the integral of sine of 8x dx. So I'm going to try to show you how I do these in my head. It's hard to do that um, because, you know, obviously I'm doing it in my head. But what I like to do is I think of it as, you know, it's the integral. Now, there should, because of the chain rule, be an 8 on the inside. So what I'll do is I'll put an 8 there, but you can't just do that because now the answer would be 8 times as big. So I balance it with a 1 8 on the outside. Now I've made the inside perfect. It is perfectly like sine of u du. Um, so what I'm going to do is the uh, derivative of, what am I doing here? The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So I'm going to get, uh, there's the 1 8. Now I'm going to get negative 1 8 because of negative cosine. And then 8x plus c. So that's how I usually do these in my head without like really showing work. It's hard to explain exactly what you're doing, but let's do it on the next one. So I'm leaving that little gap there. Now, if this is just the derivative of um, something of 5x cubed, there should have been a 15x squared on the outside. So I'll put a 15 and then a, a 1 15th to balance it out. And now the inside is perfectly the derivative of sine, right? Sine of 5x cubed. So I know that my answer is going to be 1 15th sine of 5x cubed. If you do enough problems, this process starts to make sense to you and you save a lot of time by not like showing u equals and then du and going through that. But if you don't like it, just always show the work. There's, there's nothing wrong with showing the work. I just wanted to point out there are other ways that people are doing it. People are basically doing u substitution in their head when it looks like they're not doing u substitution. That's what I tell people all the time because I'm pretty sure that's what I'm doing in my head. I'm just like doing the manipulations without showing them. Let's look at a new problem. I'm gonna write the definite integral equivalent to, or write a definite integral equivalent to this thing. So uh, this is where we want to find a delta x, an x sub k, and figure out what f of x is. So for delta x, it's usually just a constant, mul well, not a constant, it's a multiple, um, where usually n is in the denominator, in fact, always, I think. Um, so I'm going to say delta x is 1 over n. And then once I say that, I now need to figure out what I think x sub k is. I'm going to choose x sub k to just be k over n, right? And if I make that choice, it'll determine what f of x is, like what function am I plugging x sub k into? So it'd be the square root of 5x sub k plus 3. The function must be the square root of 5x plus 3 if I make this choice. Um, but let's write that down. Once you have x sub k, you need to find x sub 0 and x sub n. That's going to be where your integral starts and where your integral stops. So when we plug in here, we just get um, 0 and 1. Now we said if x sub k is k over n, then uh, we're doing the square root of 5x sub k plus 3. The function should be the square root of 5x plus 3. And now we just write our integral. So our integral is going to be the integral from 0 to 1, square root of 5x plus 3, um, and then dx. Okay, so that's one way of doing it, but there are other ways. So another, I think, kind of straightforward way is to say that delta x is 1 over n. Make x sub k be 5k over n plus 3. So I'm going to actually make my choice of x sub k to be the entire thing inside the radical, right? So now you're just doing radical x sub k, which means our function would be square root of x. Oh, I forgot. We have to find, sorry, once you know x sub k, you have to find x sub 0 and x sub n. That's where the bounds come from, right? But if you plug in 0, you get 3. If you plug in uh, n for k, you get n over n is 1. 5 plus 3 is 8. So we get this. And then our function we're doing the square root of x sub k, so it's square root of x. And our integral becomes the integral from 3 to 8, square root of x dx. You might notice that if you do u substitution on the left integral, you will end up with the right integral if you change the x's into u's. That's going to happen all the time because numerically, every integral that we can write based on this limit will have the same value. Um, so they're all going to kind of like u substitution their way back to the original, to the same thing, maybe not the original. All right, let's take a look at another one. Evaluate the integral of 2x minus 5 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. Step one on these, like anytime you have a rational function, if if it's like a proper rational function, meaning the uh, degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, you always want to try to just make u equal the denominator. So I'm going to do that. If that's the case, then du is the quantity 2x minus 5 dx. This is actually perfect, right? Just make your substitutions... This is unusual. We don't usually get them that are like this straightforward in the problem sets, but that's nice. Um, natural log absolute value of u plus c, and then u is 
x squared minus 5x plus 6. So finally, natural log, absolute value of x squared minus 5x plus 6 plus c. Straightforward problem. Nice. Um, for b, it's the integral of 4x plus 1 over the quantity 2x squared plus x minus 5 to the 6th. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to make u equal the quadratic thing. And then du will be 4x plus 1 dx. So this is looking good also. Let's make our substitutions. So our integral becomes du over u to the 6th. I definitely would rewrite that as u to the negative 6 du. Even if I don't write it on paper, I'm definitely in my head rewriting that as u to the negative 6 because then I can do plus 1 times the reciprocal. So plus 1 times the reciprocal gives me negative 1 fifth u to the negative 5th plus c. And then we know that u is 2x squared plus x minus 5. So these are two examples where we had quadratic things in the denominator. We tried to make the quadratic in the denominator equal u both times to see if it works. Because if that works, you're basically done. Let's look at another example. Evaluate. So this one almost looks the same. Integral of 1 over x squared minus 8x plus 20 dx. All right, so try the same thing. That's basically what you're doing when you're learning to find antiderivatives is a couple of techniques, and then you just learn when to use each of the techniques. But to learn that, you just try them. And a lot of the time, that means you fail, right? You fail at that technique, but then you try another one. So here, I'm going to say that du is... 2x minus 8 dx. But look at the original. We do not have any x's in the numerator. We don't have a sum or difference in the numerator. This is problematic, right? So at this point, if you don't know anything else, you're like, uh-oh, I'm, I'm in trouble. But if you have a quadratic in the denominator and u substitution doesn't immediately work, there's a very good chance that completing the square will work. And you're actually looking at an arctan situation. So I'm going to complete the square on this. So I take the original. I leave a gap here. Um, and then I'll put the 20. So the reason I'm leaving a gap there is that I want to complete the square in the denominator. So I'm going to take uh, the coefficient of x is negative 8, divide that by 2, that's negative 4. Square is 16, add and subtract that. So plus 16 minus 16. Now I need to kind of like rewrite this again. So these three terms are going to be a perfect square trinomial. That's the quantity x minus 4 squared. That's the idea behind completing the square. You better end up with a perfect square somewhere. Otherwise, something went wrong. And then negative 16 and 20 is 4 and our dx. So we're getting there, but this isn't exactly arctan yet, right? Arctan is 1 over 1 plus u squared. I don't have that 1 in the denominator. To get that, I'm going to divide every single thing I see by 4. So I'll get 1 fourth in the numerator. I'll get the quantity x minus 4 squared over 4 and then plus 4 over 4 in the denominator. Uh, so I'm going to rearrange. I'm also going to pull the 1 fourth from the numerator out. So 1 fourth. Uh, then I'll have the integral of 1 over, I'm writing as 1 plus, and then I'm going to write the quantity x minus 4 over 2 squared. The reason for that is that I have uh, really this. I have x minus 4 squared over 4, but 4 is 2 squared. So I want to write it as 1 over 1 plus u squared. So u would be x minus 4 over 2. So I have x minus 4 over 2 and then quantity squared. All right, let's do a quick u substitution on this. We'll make u equal x minus 4 over 2, as I just said which means that 2 du is equal to dx. We'll do all of our substitutions. So we get 1 fourth. You get a 2 from uh, the 2 du being equal to dx. Uh, and then we get 1 over 1 plus u squared du. That's definitely arctan. So this will be 1 half arctan of u plus c. And then we know that u is actually x minus 4 over 2. So our final answer here is going to be 1 half arctan of quantity x minus 4 over 2, and then plus c. And there you go. That's the whole problem set. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.